Ladies and gentlemen, I am about to share with you one of the most best kept secrets of home audio and video. It is the Sir SIR TS360 made by Samsung. It's a satellite receiver, but it's more than a satellite receiver. It is a satellite receiver on steroids. That is right. Although I never fed it steroids, apparently Samsung did. Back in the day, this receiver was a home receiver for DirecTV, HD. It is no longer compatible with HD for DirecTV, but it will do standard definition for DirecTV if you happen to have that service. However, I am using this for way more than what it was designed for, and I'm going to show you how. You may be watching this video because you're looking for an upscaler to use with video games, or maybe you're looking for a way to convert signals. Perhaps you want to convert a uh, component to uh, S-Video, or you want to convert uh, S-Video to uh, component video output, or you want to convert uh, S-Video or composite to VGA. This thing does it all, and it does it at a relatively affordable price. I have a very complicated setup here in my home. This is my home theater rack. I have a audio video receiver made by Yamaha. With a, it has component video and uh, input and output. I have a first gen Apple TV. I have a Wii U. Over here I have a PS3. I have an RCA Select Division video disc player and a Toshiba HD DVD player. Over here I have a standard Wii. My first uh, line of watching my video is on this RCA 720p plasma TV and if you look up on my ceiling right behind us here you will see a projector sitting up there and that is a sharp XR 10x projector and those are found very cheaply on eBay I've had mine about 10 years already and uh, but it does 720p high definition video as well and does it beautifully so let's bring things back down here and talk about the system that will amaze you and your friends. Uh, this system has the capability of taking all kinds of inputs, and we're talking like cable input, uh, over-the-air antenna input, uh, satellite input. It has those three inputs, and then it has a, a plethora of, of, uh, of cable inputs uh, on the back as well. You can connect standard composite video to this unit, S video to this unit or uh, 480p or 480i component video and output it to uh, let's see it does not do HDMI but it will do DVI which you can convert to HDMI possibly I've not tried that but there is a cable out there that does that uh, it also outputs to VGA and it also outputs to component my entire setup here is component so, uh, and the reason I did that is because when I bought my projector that we saw earlier, uh, I had to have component because that's the high definition input on it, uh, other than VGA, which is kind of a pain to run across the ceiling and, you know, along walls and stuff. So, uh, at least it was for me. So, in any case, uh, I've done the component thing and everything in my system has to be converted to component to make it work. Now, the output of this uh, unit here, the, 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 the Samsung, goes to my receiver and then uh, on the output of the receiver it is split and it goes to both the TV and the projector simultaneously so I'm not having to switch that particular output but I just have to uh, I have to switch my inputs um, and to do all of that I recommend that you get one of these units if you're going to get the Samsung receiver and I bet you you're going to want one after we go through all this uh, you're going to want one of these Harmony remotes to go with it and the reason is is because this is going to simplify all the switching that needs to be done for the inputs for you. And it does it directly as opposed to having to go through a crazy menu, which I'll show you here in a minute, to get to where those inputs are. Also, you can disable the satellite TV portion of the unit. And the reason you're going to want to do that is if you don't, every time you power down the unit and turn it back on, it's going to want to connect to a satellite dish and do its little update and look for all the channels and satellites and all that stuff. So you can actually disable the use of the satellite receiver so that it doesn't bother you with all that. So that part's pretty cool as well. 
So again, if you get one of these guys, look on eBay for it. You'll find one from anywhere from $40 up to $150. You might even find one on Craigslist or at a local Goodwill store. All right, so let's get into the unit. And to demonstrate that, I'll show you how to get to the TV uh, portion of the unit, which is the over-the-air uh, HD TV antenna that I'm using it for. So let's go to our activities on here. And you'll see that I've got all these activities set up. I've got Wii to my HD TV, satellite, HD DVD, Apple TV. And if I go over here to the next screen, you'll see all of those for the projector. And then you'll see watch TV, PS3 to the to the TV or to the projector. And then I've got laser disc, which I've recently swapped out with the RCA video disc player. And then uh, let's see. LaserDisc HDTV, Wii U to the HDTV or Wii U to the projector, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's go ahead and we're going to do satellite to HDD, HDTV. All right, so I'm going to hold it out here and it's going to turn on the TV. It's going to turn on the receiver. You can see it there. And you'll see that it turned it to channel 11 1. And you can see, look at that gorgeous picture I'm getting through that thing, all right? So right now, this satellite receiver is pulling channel 11-1 out of the air and playing it on my TV through my receiver so that I get the, uh, the, the Dolby Digital output, which I'm using uh, uh, optical digital output there. And we're having a bad day for uh, channel 11. Actually, channel 11 is always weak on this particular unit. So anyway, let's change it to a channel where it stays a little bit more stable. And uh, let's see, come on, channel up. So we'll go to say channel two, because that in here in St. Louis, that's the strongest signal. I live, I live about 40 miles from St. Louis, so I don't get the best reception out here. Even though I have an antenna with a mast that goes 15 feet up into the air. Okay, so there's channel 2-1, which is our Fox affiliate here in St. Louis. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down so we don't have to uh, compete with that. All right, so what I want to do is I want to bring up the menu. And on my Harmony, I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, I'm going to put it down so I can see and do with this at the same time. I'm going to have to go to the device, actually, because, well, maybe menu comes up on here. There's menu. I'll show you right here. There's menu. So let's see if that actually brings up the menu. It does! All right, check that out. Now, ironically, this, this satellite unit, which is what we're seeing this menu from right now, has uh, the ability to play games. If you look here under Extras, I'll activate that. You'll see a calendar, biorhythm, and some games. Now, let's hit the game here, and I'll show you this. This is really funky. So you've got these, uh, these little games here, Egg Egg, Battle Sea, uh, what does that say? Rail Whiz and Bugs Opera. So it's just kind of funky that a satellite receiver has games on it. But anyway, you can check those out if you decide to get one of these units. Most of what you're going to be doing is here in the setup menu. So we're going to go into the setup menu right now. And here you've got your preferences. It actually has a caller ID in it as well so you can hook your phone into it and know when you're getting a call and I'll show that on the TV uh, and this is where you're gonna go is this antenna and cable section right here and uh, I've, I've told it that I have digital TV as my scan type uh, cable type doesn't really matter um, let's see I can add or remove channels digital off-air signal meter okay one of these is for the satellite let's see where's that at I think it's under installation actually yeah, see here it says set dish. So if I go underneath there, select dish type. A little slow. The system is currently locked. Please select. Okay, so I have a parental lock on here. So I'm going to put in my password. It's really great. You can set the parental uh, lock for TV shows so your kids can't watch certain TV shows. All right, now notice in here I have dish type as no dish. That is what you want to do. You want to go into this part and set no dish. Otherwise, it's going to give you a lot of trouble. Now, if you have a dish, that's fine. You can go ahead and, and, and dish it out. That's, that's fine. Um, 
Also in here, let's see, you have monitor set up. So under my monitor setup, I've got raster. Okay, so I can do picture centering. Um, but on the front here, let's see, raster picture centering is only available for RGB, DVI, or YP, YPB, PR, which is component. Uh, let's see if I can get out of this. I'll show you on the front of the TV or on the front of the receiver. It's actually easier to do. Uh, this button right here on the front uh, helps you with your output modes. Okay, it's this button right here. So by pressing that, I can change the type of output. So if you're not getting any video, it could be that it's set to like VGA output. So if you don't get a signal, see, watch when I hit that button, I lose my signal. Okay, and then here there is a resolution mode. By hitting that, I can change my output resolution so say like 1080i 720p 1080i 720p now over here what it's showing you is that there's different modes there's a native mode which means whatever the input is play it as that input so if it's 720p play it as 720p, but you can also set it that no matter what the input is, output it as 1080i, which would be that setting right there. All right, so if you just want the maximum upscale and the maximum setting, you can set it there. Let's see, there's our 480p or 480i. All right, and native is probably the best setting uh, because it'll display uh, whatever the input is as the output, okay? Um, if you need to upscale, you can try the, uh, just try the 1080p setting. All right, so let's move on. Now, what about the back of this unit? On the back of the unit, and I'm not gonna unhook all my stuff to show you this, because it's just too much trouble. Um, take me all day. Over here, you'll see, uh, this is where the satellite input cables come in. Uh, you can see right there, it has air in, so that's your over-the-air antenna. Next to that is your dish, and so that plugs in right there next to it. You can see I've got my Wii connected there and I'm going to show you how the picture quality on that here in a minute. Uh, make sure you have a component cable for your Wii otherwise you won't be able to hook it up this way but it's the best way to get the best signal out of your Wii is using the component cable and I recommend a, a website uh, like uh, cables to go or um, I don't know ain't even Amazon you could probably find uh, that particular cable so you can see down here, you've got your outputs, you've got your, uh, your DVI output, you've got your uh, VGA output over there next to it, which I'm not using. You've got your uh, inputs over here, like your S-Video input, which I'm not using. Uh, over here on the output side, see, so you, you can actually output S-Video, and it will actually output all of those particular types simultaneously, I believe, except with the exception being VGA, but um, you can experiment with that. So I have, um, uh, I think I said that earlier that I'm using the optical digital output from this receiver to my uh, to my Yamaha receiver, and you can see the other outputs that I'm using there. Actually, I might be using the uh, component digital output. I forget. All right. So just take my word for it, you have all those options back there. So the next step is to actually show you what video is gonna look like through this unit when it's upscaled or upconverted. And what I wanna do is go to my activities on here and I'm gonna play Wii on the HDTV. All right, so I press that on my Harmony remote. And as you see here, this is the Wii being played through this receiver. Now the receiver has the ability to change the, um, the aspect ratio. So if you wanted to stretch it across the screen, you could actually do that if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, you know, it might be better to watch it in its native mode, which is 4.3 here. So it's gonna have the black bars on the sides. All right. So what about something like uh, RCA Select Division? Okay. So for that, I'm gonna go to my activities here and I'm gonna do laser disc to the HDTV, which is right there. 
I'll switch that over. All right, and you'll see that the satellite is changing over to video. All right, so now I have my video input. And again, that's why you'll want a harmony to do this. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of a pain. I'm going to turn on my RCA Select Division video disc player. And I'm going to put in this uh, 1998 preview, which I have on my channel, if you want to watch the whole thing, or at least the funniest parts of it. It's very cheesy and dated. So I'm going to put that in. And it didn't take it, so let's try it again. There it goes. All right, so again, we have the RCA Select Division hooked up to this satellite receiver. Then it goes through here, and then it goes to my TV. And there is RCA video disc being played through this upscaler up converter. Okay. Doesn't look that fabulous because, again, it's a really low res quality video signal, but it's very watchable. I mean, it's really not horrifying to watch it on here or even on the satellite. So there you go. And again, you can watch this cheesy video on my channel where she offers you some uh, cheese puffs. But she's out of quiche. So anyway, um, I hope this helps you. I hope this uh, inspires you to, to find one of these units. Again, it can help you in uh, many circumstances. It does all kinds of stuff. And, of course, it does it simultaneously, which is nice, too. But, uh, anyway, you can hook your NES up to this. You can hook any vintage game system up to it through the, uh, through the composite. It only has one of each. It has one composite, has one component, has one S-video input. So that's all you get. So if you want to run more things into it, then you'll need to get something like this, this box here, which now I have my line off and you can't see. But you'll need some kind of an external switcher to, to give it more than one video component input. Well, I appreciate you watching, and if this has helped you, share it with a friend, and uh, please subscribe to my videos, and uh, make a comment down below if you have a question as to what you could hook up to this unit. I'll be happy to answer that in the comments below. And I appreciate you watching, and have a great day.